Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa, where I take difficult biological concepts and make them easy to understand. Today, we are going to continue through our series in introducing the human body. In this video, we are covering abdominal pelvic regions and quadrants. Clinicians often divide the abdominal pelvic cavity into four quadrants using two imaginary lines that intersect at the umbilicus or belly button. There's a vertical line through the midline and a horizontal line at the level of the navel. These form the right upper quadrant or RUQ, which contains the liver, gallbladder, part of the pancreas, and parts of the small and large intestines. The left upper quadrant, LUQ, which houses the stomach, spleen, part of the liver, pancreas, and parts of the intestines. The right lower quadrant, RLQ, which includes the appendix, right ovary, and fallopian tube in females, the right ureter, and parts of the intestines. And then the left lower quadrant, or LLQ, which contains the left ovary and fallopian tube in females, the left ureter, and portions of the intestines. These quadrants are especially useful in clinical settings. For example, RLQ pain might suggest appendicitis. For more precise anatomical description, especially in textbooks and surgery, we use the nine region system. Imagine drawing two vertical lines at the midpoints of the clavicles and two horizontal lines. One at the bottom of the rib cage, the subcostal line, and one at the top of the hip bones, the transtubercular line. This creates nine regions. The right hypochondriac region, which includes the liver and gallbladder, the epigastric region, which includes the stomach and part of the liver, the left hypochondriac region, which includes the stomach and the spleen, the right lumbar region, which includes the ascending colon and right kidney, the umbilical region, which includes the small intestine and transverse colon, the left lumbar region, which includes the descending colon and left kidney, the right iliac region or inguinal region, which includes the appendix and cecum, the hypogastric region or pubic region, which includes the urinary bladder and reproductive organs, and then the left iliac region, which is also referred to as inguinal region, or left inguinal region, uh, which includes the sigmoid colon. This system gives us more detailed anatomical landmarks. For instance, locating a mass in the left hypochondriac region might lead a physician to investigate the spleen. So here's the big picture. The abdominal pelvic cavity is home to many major organs, and knowing where they sit is essential for both anatomy and clinical practice. The four quadrants give us a fast and practical way to describe general location, perfect for things like emergency medicine or physical exams. The nine regions give us a more precise map, ideal for surgical anatomy, diagnostics, and understanding how organs relate to one another. Knowing these divisions helps us to speak the same language, whether you're reading a textbook, interpreting a scan, or working alongside healthcare professionals. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on a new video. We're building a solid foundation in anatomy and physiology, and I'm so glad you're here learning with me. I'll see you in the next video.